Everyone's talking about the return of the woolly mammoth. Colossal Biosciences says we could see one by 2028. Resurrected through gene editing. Revived through modern elephants. But what if we're bringing back the wrong giant? Because hidden behind the mammoth's fame is something older, more aggressive, more unpredictable. A monster not of the tundra, but of the forest. Its tusks were straighter. Its skull was thicker. Its bite wasn't built for grazing. It was built for crushing. Its name was Mastodon. It moved alone, territorial, cautious, quiet. The few fossils we've found tell a violent story. Tusk wounds, shattered bones, footprints that end suddenly next to something larger. They lived longer than mammoths, spread farther, fought harder. But today, no one is trying to bring them back. No one is studying how they'd react to a world filled with humans, cities, roads, concrete. Because maybe mammoths make a better headline. And mastodons? They make a better warning. Forget what you think you know. Mastodons weren't just another kind of mammoth. They were an entirely different beast, where mammoths adapted to cold, open tundras. Mastodons thrived in forests, dense, shadowy, tree-thick environments, places where visibility was low, and surprise mattered more than speed. Their bodies were stockier, their legs shorter, and their skulls were massive. They stood around 10 feet tall, weighed over six tons, and carried a thicker, heavier skeleton than their woolly relatives. But what really set them apart was the jaw. Their teeth weren't flat like mammoths. They were conical, almost reptilian in shape, designed not for grazing, but for crushing twigs, branches, and bark. That means tougher bites, tougher diets, tougher temperaments. Scientists believe mastodons had more individualistic behavior, less herding instinct than mammoths, which could mean one thing, they didn't like to share. And if you got too close, they didn't just posture, they reacted. Fossils show healed tusk wounds, meaning territorial fights, trampled bones suggesting dominance disputes, and migration trails that hint at solitary movement. These weren't gentle giants, they were land tanks, designed to survive cold forests, shifting terrain, and predator ambushes. Mastodons were armored in bulk and calibrated for confrontation. Yet despite all this, they vanished, overshadowed by the mammoth's fame, left out of the resurrection conversation. And now, most people don't even know they existed, but they did. And if they return today, they might not fit in at all, because what we're remembering as history might have been a warning we talk about saber-toothed cats, giant bears, dire wolves. But what if one of the most dangerous animals of the Ice Age wasn't a predator? What if it was the mastodon? Unlike mammoths, mastodons didn't travel in large, protective herds. They moved in smaller groups, sometimes alone. More like modern elephants in the wild. And just like elephants, they were smart, emotional, and potentially volatile. But unlike modern elephants, they had tusks built for war. Straight, thick, forward-facing, perfect for stabbing, shoving, or smashing. Some fossil records show gore marks on ribs and skulls, not from predators, but from other mastodons. Scientists believe they frequently fought over territory, mating rights, or even dominance within a group, and then, there's the evidence from human encounters. At multiple archaeological sites, human-made spear points have been found embedded in mastodon bones. But so have crushed tools, shattered weapons, and footprints leading away in panic. These weren't passive creatures that stood still and died. They charged, they retaliated, and they may have killed. One fossil site in Washington revealed a mastodon with broken ribs, likely from blunt trauma. Nearby, 
scattered human remains, crushed. It's just a theory, but it fits the pattern. We hunted them, but they didn't go quietly. And maybe that's why no one is trying to bring them back. For over three million years, mastodons thrived. They roamed across Asia, Europe, and North America. They survived ice ages. They outlasted predators. They carved out a space in forests where few dared follow. But around 10,000 years ago, they vanished. Not gradually, not quietly, fast, sudden, violent. So what happened? Theories point to two culprits, climate change and us. As the last ice age ended, forests began to shift. Food sources thinned, water patterns changed. But the mastodons had seen that before. They'd adapted. This time, though, something else was different. Humans. We didn't just chase them. We outsmarted them. We tracked herds across weeks, used coordinated ambushes, weapons tipped with obsidian, traps, fire, strategy. And when we pushed mastodons too far, they pushed back. Some cave sites show signs of struggle. Others, of butchery. A few, of massacre. And perhaps the most haunting theory. We didn't just wipe them out. We wiped out their memory. Mastodons were lost not just to extinction, but to story. We remember the mammoths. We paint them on walls. We sculpt them in museums. We design plans to bring them back. But mastodons? They're the ghosts in the background. The monster you hear but never see. The fossil left unspoken. Because while mammoths may symbolize lost innocence, mastodons remind us of conflict, of resistance, of a creature that didn't go extinct so much as it was erased. And that raises a chilling question. If we could bring them back, should we? Right now, in a high-tech lab in Texas, scientists are working to bring back a creature that vanished thousands of years ago. The woolly mammoth, not just in theory, in action. By 2028, Colossal Biosciences claims they'll create the world's first functional mammoth. A genetically edited elephant designed to look act and survive like its Ice Age ancestor. They're using Asian elephant DNA, splicing it with cold-resistant genes from preserved mammoth tissue and growing embryos that could soon be implanted in a surrogate. If successful, the result would be a hybrid, not a clone, not quite a mammoth, but close. So why the mammoth? It's iconic, majestic, a symbol of environmental restoration reintroduced to help restore tundra ecosystems, combat carbon buildup, and stir public wonder. But here's the twist. No one's doing this for mastodons. Not because they weren't important, not because they're impossible, but because mammoths are marketable, safe, elegant. Mastodons? They were solitary, forest-bound, unpredictable, and their DNA is harder to extract because they roamed deeper south, in places where preservation was weaker. But some researchers quietly admit, if we focused on it, mastodon resurrection could happen. So why don't we? Is it because their story isn't hopeful? Because their return wouldn't symbolize balance, but something closer to chaos? Maybe it's easier to bring back the gentle icon than the beast we buried without explanation. Imagine this, a dark forest, quiet, still, and from the shadows, a six-ton creature steps out. Thick skull, forward tusks, eyes that don't scan but lock. This isn't a mammoth, it's a mastodon, and it's back. Now, ask the question, what happens next? Because the mastodon wasn't built for spectacle, it wasn't a tundra grazer, it was a solitary titan, adapted to dense forests, not open fields. Could it survive in our world? Not easily. We've fragmented the habitats they once dominated. Our forests are smaller, our roads are everywhere, and humans, we're still here. A resurrected mastodon wouldn't just be endangered, it would be trapped. By space, by noise, by us. Would it become aggressive? 
Would it understand its place? Would we? And what if, just like before, we couldn't control it? If it trampled farmland, crushed a fence, charged a human? Would we call it a miracle or a mistake? And what would it mean for conservation? If we bring back a creature we drove to extinction, then kill it again? This isn't just science fiction, it's a warning. Because reviving a mastodon wouldn't be a media stunt, it would be an ecological event. And the scars it might leave wouldn't be ancient, they'd be fresh. So maybe the question isn't whether we can bring them back. Maybe it's whether we're ready to face them again. History remembers what it's comfortable with. The mammoth became a symbol, a gentle colossus buried in snow and nostalgia. But the mastodon, it slipped through the cracks. No statues, no cartoons, no de-extinction programs, just bones and silence. But what if we didn't forget them by accident? What if we chose to forget? Because mastodons weren't built for mythology, they were built for war. Their fossils don't tell stories of herds migrating peacefully. They tell of battles, broken tusks, wounded pride. We didn't paint them in caves, we didn't pass them down in legends. Maybe because the people who saw them didn't survive. Maybe the memory was too real, too recent, too dangerous. And now, as science reaches into the past to resurrect giants, we face a choice. Do we bring back the icon or the monster? Do we revive the species we think we understand? Or the one that once looked us in the eye and didn't flinch? Because the truth is, we could bring them back. We have the tools. We may one day have the DNA. But the real question isn't how, it's why. Why do we want them back? And more importantly, are we ready for them if they come back remembering us?